Hi, I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography, and I'm based here in normally beautiful, sunny southwest Florida, but not today. It's monsoon season, and it's raining pretty good. Anyway, this is the newly released Sigma 14-24mm f2.8 art series lens. And if you're a real estate, landscape, or architectural photographer, then there's a new sheriff in town, and its name is Sigma. Now, just a brief disclaimer, I was not compensated to produce this review. However, I am an affiliate with B&H Photo, who was kind enough to send me the Sigma for 30 days in order to do this review. The link to purchase the Sigma is below in the description. And as always, thank you for your support. Now, let's get on to the review. So first up is the build, and like virtually all the other Sigma art lenses, the 14 to 24 is built to a very high professional standard. The Siggy is a stubby beast, standing at only seven and a quarter inches tall and coming in at two and a half pounds or 1150 grams. That's heavy, really heavy. I mean, it could actually double as a workout weight. But the weight actually makes sense given that it's a constant and bright f2.8 aperture throughout the zoom range. That means there's gonna be a lot of glass in there. Check out that front element. And that thing is massive, and this thing just shrieks wide-angle photography. On the inside, it's a very complicated formula of 17 elements arranged in 11 groups. Included in that formula are three FLD elements, three SLD elements, and three aspherical elements, which work together to help reduce color fringing and chromatic aberrations. The aperture ranges from f2.8 to f22. And speaking of the aperture, there are nine rounded aperture blades, which makes for some pleasing bokeh rendering. Well, as pleasing as it can be from an ultra wide angle lens, as you typically don't buy a wide angle lens like this for ravishing bokeh rendering. And, so the, and the Siggy really is no exception, but for what it is, bokeh rendering is actually pretty nice. The lens mount is a brass bayonet that has a gasket to help prevent the ingress of dust and moisture. The focus ring is just buttery smooth. I mean, it just stinks of quality. The zoom ring too, is really buttery as well and it oozes of quality too. It's very Zeiss-like. Now one other thing that Sigma has figured out and it's a huge point of contention for me with my Nikon 14 to 24 is this lens cap. This design is a thing of brilliance. It actually has like this like suction mechanism that holds the cap into place. My Nikon on the other hand, the cap on that thing keeps falling off constantly. This is really nothing to hold it in place. This is a really smart, smart design by Sigma that furthers the feeling of really high quality. Oh, and the autofocus manual focus switch, it clicks into place with certainty. Now on the downside, the bulbous and curved nature of that front element unfortunately means that standard screw-on filters need not apply. And unfortunately, the Sigma does not have image stabilization. But really, that's about it. So for build, it really just doesn't get much better than this. And as such, the 14 to 24 gets a perfect 10 out of 10 for build quality. So next up is AF speed and accuracy. Outfitted with Sigma's latest HSM or hypersonic motor, focus speed is reasonably quick. In fact, it's pretty much instantaneous and thus far, in my experience, it's also proven to be very accurate. Now understand that most people utilizing this lens are going to be likely using it in a, real, in a landscape or real estate type situation. The camera and the lens are going to be set up on a tripod, shooting at somewhere between say f5.6 and f11 at a static subject, meaning that the goal is for many utilizing this lens to get everything in focus. And focus speed is not always the most important consideration with an ultra wide lens like this. Now that said, I'm sure wedding shooters will have a place for this lens too, as will some sports photographers. In fact, a lot of skateboard photographers have reached out to me in the past when I've done a wide angle lens review to express how they utilize lenses like this and the importance of focus speed and accuracy in those situations. Now I've used it in situations outside of my real estate work and I have to say, I'm impressed with the focus speed and with the accuracy. Also, given it's only 10 and a half inch minimum focus distance, the 14 to 24 can offer some value as a macro lens. In reality, with a wide angle lens, the elements on the inside need not to travel all that far to achieve accurate focus. Combine that with the latest hypersonic focus motor and the 14 to 24 impresses, again, with nearly instantaneous and very accurate focus. As a result, the Sigma gets a perfect 10 out of 10 for AF speed and accuracy. So next up is optical quality and the quality of the results. 
As a real estate photographer, I'm always on a mission to get the best possible optical quality at the lowest possible cost. But let there be no doubt, the Sigma is a truly impressive optic. I'm usually shooting at f8, and I find that the center performance to be, I find it just to be beautiful. And the edges, specifically at f8, well, they look really impressive too. Distortion, though existent, is largely, though not completely correctable, utilizing the lens profile correction in programs like Lightroom. Lens flare and chromatic aberrations are also very well controlled. Flare performance, however, though it's well controlled, it's not quite up to the standard set by the Tamron 15 to 30, which to date, in my experience, has the best performance of a wide angle lens against bright light that I've ever used or tested. Now for my video work, what I'm doing is I'm utilizing a lens adapter to attach the 14 to 24 onto my Sony A7R Mark III, and the results have been really impressive. However, as with all my reviews, don't take my word for it, see for yourself. The next two to three minutes will be a series of stills and video clips showcasing the optical aptitude of the Sigma 14 to 24 art series lens. And if you shoot wide angle, it doesn't get much better than this. So last up and arguably most important is value. Today we have a variety of choices for wide angle lenses, both native and third party, depending on the camera system that we're utilizing. Now speaking for myself, I shoot primarily Nikon in both my real estate and wedding work. And honestly, I'd have no problem picking up and utilizing the Sigma 14 to 24 in my professional work tomorrow. This thing is built impressively and solidly. Now it's short and stubby like a fire hydrant, and, but the optics are just awesome. It's weather sealed and the focus and zoom rings are perfectly dampened with just the right amount of resistance, etc. Now the downsides are this bulbous front element that prevents normal screw-on filters and the weight because this bad boy is heavy coming in at two and a half pounds. Now granted, most who utilize this lens are gonna have it seated on a tripod like this as opposed to hand-holding. The Sigma can be yours for $1,299, which admittedly isn't cheap. But I think it's a bit better than the Nikon 14 to 24. I mean, it certainly handles flare better than the Nikon. It's also about $600 less than the Nikon. So in that sense, the Sigi is a great value. But when compared to the Tamron 15 to 30, they're nearly the same price. Built similarly, the Sigma is one millimeter wider, but the Tamron has image stabilization and it does handle flare a bit better. 
So all in, I think the Sigma is a great deal, and for value, it gets a 9.5 out of 10. <laughs>So to wrap up this review, we gave the Sigma 14 to 24 f 2.8 Art Series lens a 49 out of 50 and our coveted Editor's Choice Award. It's now tied with the Sigma 135 f 1.8 Art Series lens as the highest scoring lens that I've ever used or tested. The final word, if you shoot landscape, real estate, or architecture, Sigma has just made the decision of which lens to purchase that much more difficult. Truthfully, you really can't go wrong with any of the big three. The 14 to 24 is from both Nikon or Sigma or the aforementioned Tamron 15 to 30. Tamron and the Sigma come in at nearly the same price point. There's only a $100 difference between them. The Sigma is a little bit wider and built a little bit better, but the Tamron handles flare considerably better and has the added benefit of image stabilization. Meaning that, in the end, it's up to you to decide which of those attributes is most important to you when making your buying decision. Now, I currently own the Nikon 14 to 24, and even though I believe the Sigma and the Tamron are both better lenses, I don't really feel compelled to get rid of my Nikon and purchase either one of those. However, if I were just starting out and needed to decide, there's about a 95% chance that I would just toss a coin, and if it landed on heads, I get the Sigma, or if it landed on tails, I get the Tamron. Both of those lenses, to me, are better than the Nikon. I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography, based here in beautiful, and the sun is actually coming out somewhat sunny Southwest Florida. If you like these reviews, please be sure to give me a like, or better yet, subscribe. Until the next time, happy shooting.